<coughs> What's up? It's Monday again. It's Monday again. The 28th of December. Another episode number five. Ladies and gentlemen, this is episode number five of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. I'm your host, Alex, the intern. And every episode is a special episode. Today's is no different. I was um, trolling, I guess, patrolling, patrolling, just tending to some of the social media, getting it all in order because 2021 is looking to be um, eventful, full of activity. And I hope uh, a very peaceable year. But I got into uh, a little back and forth, like just started a discussion with a, um, a commenter on professionalism, on diplomacy, on being an expert. And it gave me uh it gave me pause to think and consider the relation between those terms and what this commenter had left me with to think about and for those of you who just stumbled upon this podcast and this is the first one that you um have the chance to listen to if you didn't binge one through four (laughs) if you end up on five yeah you have uh there if there's the option exists for you to speed up the podcast to something greater than one times the speed if you could do one and a quarter or one and a half that might be recommended um if um if you just found us, you can uh, support the podcast. I mean, I'm doing this. I'm doing this really for for education purposes, mental health reasons. Why? Because I'm a uh, I'm a recent. What is it? Not even recent. I'm still on the shit. But um, I'm I'm actually in training now for uh, a particular program that I need to be able to argument, argue, argue and debate, argumentation and debate. I'll need to enhance my social skills above where they exist now. I need them at a higher level. I need to hone them. I need to sharpen my wit, my way of thinking, how quickly I can assemble a piece of logic and use it. Um, but yeah, this commenter, uh, though I am, I am uh, bringing attention to the conversation. I won't disclose their identity if you really wanted to find out. I suppose you could go through posts on Instagram and come across conversations that I've had with multiple commenters. But essentially they're saying that what we perceive to be professionalism is it's an ongoing process. It's ever changing. And I suppose they're right. Where one must also embrace diplomacy in order to be a professional. When you're a professional, you're you're trusted. You're trusted because you're diplomatic. And in that way, you remain a professional. When you let diplomacy drop, when you let your front of professionalism drop, you're no longer entrusted 
with responsibilities as a professional would be. You see, you can claim you are a professional, but professionalism is one of many instances where actions speak louder than words. Diplomacy is that action. <laughs> and even, even within professionalism, diplomacy takes on many... Diplomacy takes on many uh, manifestations, I suppose. Diplomacy appears in many ways. In order to be diplomatic in your business affairs, there must be, one must have the capability to understand the want to understand and, um, and relate. You don't need so much compassion, we'll say. Compassion, I feel, is a luxury in many instances in business. Passion, passion coupled with diplomacy, I feel more than compensates for compassion. Why? Because undue compassion, undue empathy, uh, undue sympathy can be detrimental to business. I've seen it firsthand. I've seen businesses go under for personal reasons. And um, while they might be justified to the individual, justifiable in the sense that they can do what they want, it's their business. They don't realize, they may not realize they're contractually bound, contractually bound to other other parties. It could be contractors, suppliers, distributors. And yeah, there are, there may be legal outs, but it's the reputation, I suppose, that it carries. It's the way it might be handled. Um, it's the way it affects professionalism. If it isn't handled in a diplomatic manner. And yeah, airing, airing one's grievances, communicating problems, all of that falls within the bounds of diplomacy. But then being a professional, being cold, being calculating, is what makes one is is what makes a uh, a professional renowned. See, that's some corporate cowboy shit. It's easier when you don't have obligations to anybody outside of your profession that veil between professional and personal lessons or does it completely disappear when all you have is business business to myself is always personal business is always personal and that's because I choose to treat every interaction in a professional, if not always diplomatic manner. At the end of the day, all I have is myself. I can only exert so much effort, so much energy, dedicate so much time before all 24 hours of my allotted day are taken up and accounted for. But if I have professional obligations, those should be in my mind always because professional obligations can become personal very quick, quickly, with the quickness. <laughs> Diplomacy. 
Do I have a story for this one? I do, actually. I have a couple, but I'm not... I'm not really set up right now for uh, for a story. Um, I got a couple things to take care of here. I know I could probably um, extend the stories or shorten them. But um, if I could think of a really good one and it comes to my mind clearly, then I'll definitely open that archive and walk you through it. And this concept of professionalism, um, to some, is a joke, and I get it. I, I sincerely hope that professionalism is a joke in so far that it's so easy to put on, and even easier to take off. And I say so because. Again, you can claim to be a professional, and that's easier said than done. But the doing part is like pulling somebody's bitch card. (laughs) And that's also easier said than actually doing. Because uh, in doing so, tempers can flare, emotions intentions can become ill (laughs) but we can always keep that image of professionalism and those who claim to be professionals and who don't act the part calling them out I think is the most effective and it's not so much like hey you're not being professional it's taking their profession and taking their professional identity and flipping it on its head. That's, ooh, that's some corporate cowboy shit. That's what I want pretty much to be able to develop that skill, cultivate, train it, and sharpen it, put it in my fucking briefcase to just pull out and conference rooms and courtrooms <laughs> that that right there is not even implicating not even invoking emotion I just moving to <laughs> moving hold on let me see if I can do it again it's moving to somebody's professional identity turning it having them look at their own profession and then turning them flipping them on their head obviously this entails uh, having witnesses present one of the only one of the only times one of the one of the few times where having a witness is can be of benefit to you. Because if you're able to do that, all you have to do is use your mouthpiece, use your words. Don't have to reach for anything scary. Don't have to make a fucking threat, you know, a, a veiled or otherwise. No need to um, implicate people's lives. Just livelihoods. Just livelihoods. That's all we're talking about. Professional, no less. We're not talking about their personal livelihoods. We're not getting family and significant others and loved ones involved. Some do, you know, and you have to respect that. You have to appreciate it. I don't mean you have to like it and you have to let it happen. No, you just have to respect that it happens. There are some motherfuckers out there who are ruthless, who enjoy making blood boil as much as they enjoy making blood curdle. You have to be able to appreciate what it feels like to be put in the hot chair 
to get crosshairs painted on you. A lot of that comes with being a corporate cowboy. When you have a reputation, again, I'm not talking about corporate cowboys as an organization. No, 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 no. I don't I don't think that's on the table right now as far as incorporating and um, licensing corporate cowboys. It's just copywritten, trademarked for ourselves. It's internal use only, pretty much. But the language saying that's some corporate cowboy shit that's that's what I like to see happen. I want to hear more of that out in the field. And so I'm using the podcast. I'm using social media to aid my associates, to aid my partners in disseminating this message and having it proliferate the ether. I, I want it to be out there. I want the universe to have it. I want the universe to know that we're here. And again, it might only touch a few folks, but I will be repetitive with using corporate cowboys, obviously, because simply put, I want branding. That's just technical. I would like the branding. Would I like it to be a household name? No, never, never. I repeat, I do not want corporate cowboys to become a household name. Why? Because I'm a fucking professional. You don't bring your work home with you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. Oh. We're almost uh, 20 minutes in. I feel like this is a good a good point to talk about our sponsor. And today, our sponsor are, are not corporate. Again, we don't have corporate sponsors yet. We aren't even that big. If you want to help us grow, just use word of mouth. Tell your friends, use the word corporate cowboy in a sentence. Use it for me. In a, in a positive manner, use it for me in a negative manner. It's hard to do because it's two words. It's not just one. It's not an adjective. It's not a, an adverb. Though I'm sure somebody out there is a fucking wordsmith and can fashion it in a way where it could be both positive and negative in the same instance. Yeah, double entendre, double meaning, double speak. That sort of thing. But use it for me in a sentence. And when they ask, what the fuck is that? Explain it to them. Explain it to them. Simply put, corporate cowboys, corporate cowboy shit, corporate cowboy. Um, what's another noun? That's some corporate cowboy. Uh, that's a corporate cowboy deal. If it ever comes across your table, that's a corporate cowboy move. That's a corporate cowboy thought. That's a corporate cowboy maneuver. That's some corporate cowboy shit. And you can use it. A lot of folks um, will use uh, cowboy in the sense that... uh, well, I've, I've heard it used both positive and negatively. But uh, for this example, I'll just say that it's like uh, if it's used negatively, cowboys has been given the connotation. Have a cowboy, being a cowboy, has the connotation, has been denoted as being uh, like a novice. Um, even though, let's be real, like cowboys who know how to drive steer and work on ranches and do manual labor and fashion bullets out of lead by a campfire. They know a fuck ton of shit that I probably wouldn't, couldn't, can't contemplate now in the 21st century. But um, being a cowboy has been 
used synonymously with uh, jumping the gun, going in half cocked, um, pulling, pulling the trigger, not squeezing it, that sort of shit. And um, in corporate, in relation to corporate, to be a corporate cowboy, uh, it can be again both positive and negative. Our goal is to have it, yes, to have it be both. We don't discriminate. (laughs) So long as you move in a righteous manner, so long as you move to drive steer, to drive cattle, to drive stock toward growth. Notice how I use that to create opportunities. You'll be a corporate cowboy for some very experienced fat cats for some to some very experienced to some very learned corporate fat cats you will be a corporate cowboy they might view you as a novice to them you might appear as unknowledgeable young dumb full of cum jumping the gun Rocking the boat. And that's exactly how you want to appear. Until. Until you're not. Until. You're a threat. A legitimate threat. So an idea. That challenges that kind of hierarchy. Where a corporate cowboy. Even though they might be. 20 ranks below a CEO. If a corporate cowboy can cause the CEO to turn to them and believe them to be a threat, who do you think is a fucking novice? Who has the power? Who has the most to lose? The corporate cowboy or the CEO? That's some corporate cowboy shit. That's being professional. That's pulling somebody's bitch card who might claim they're a professional. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! Fucking love it. Love that shit. Just thinking about it. Makes me feel some kind of way. Makes me feel some type of way. So today's sponsor, sorry, I <laughs> said all that shit to get to today's sponsor, is wrench, wrenches. Today's sponsor are wrenches, is a wrench. Um, I'm trying to phrase it in my mind, though I know I'm doing too much. I'm doing too much. Today's sponsor, today's, the sponsor for today's episode are wrenches of any kind adjustable um, Allen's crescents brake lines castle nut <laughs> barrel nut all those kind of wrenches just wrenches monkey wrenches pipe wrench robo grip Mm. Why wrenches, you might ask? Because you got to know how to wrench. You got to know how to use them. Metaphorically, literally, wrenches, wrenches are a good thing. Some of them are adjustable. Some are made only one size. Very few are universal. So yeah, I'm not saying go out and buy. It's the last thing I want to have happen. If you have associates, if you have partners who have tools, who have the set, borrow it from them. Of course, be responsible and return it when you're done. Clean them, clean them down. Degrease them. Oil them where they need. Why? Because... 
that's the type of professionalism that you want to give off. That's trust. Next time you ask for something smaller, they won't hesitate. Next time they ask for something larger, they'll seriously consider it because there's that trust already. And they can tell the air of professionalism you give off is exactly what they want to associate with. I know that if I let one of my guys, one of my girls, an associate of mine, an associate to me, borrow a piece, I'm going to get it back. Broken down, cleaned and oiled, or in one piece, cleaned and oiled. Exactly how I gave it to them. Everything is accounted for. And again, I'm not talking physical pieces. I'm talking about mental pieces. If I hand somebody a wrench, a tool, a mental tool to use, and I come back to them for an update, they'll show me how they used it in a manner that's free of fat, degreased, and successful. It's oiled. It's already in use. And I could do that infinity times because a mental wrench, you can hand off to just about anybody who wants it. A physical wrench, one at a time. Wrenches. You know what? This is a good segue into the topic of experts. <laughs> Wrenches in relation to experts. To experts, wrenches are invaluable. Wrenches are a part of their work. It's all they fucking know. Most, I hope, continue to be professional in saying and in their work. Should they not have the wrench for the job, they're able to fashion one. Some experts, depending on what they're paid for, will stop short. Will stop short of completion. Will stop short of achievement. Will stop short of accomplishing an objective if they don't have the wrench and they claim they aren't paid for building a wrench when they are paid for success. A professional would renegotiate. Am I right or am I right? A professional would renegotiate for the cost to build the wrench in addition to completing the objective assigned to them originally. <laughs> Some experts won't do that. Yeah, it's fucking infuriating. It's fucking infuriating. Infuriating. Um, just enunciating, sorry, enunciating, pronouncing clearly. Again, I'm telling you, I'll, a lot of these uh, episodes will be cool, calm, collected, I hope. Others might be a little more lively, a little more impassioned, enthusiastic. But it's just, it really is how I'm feeling for the day, the interactions I've had beforehand. Whether or not I'm energized, whether or not somebody's got me stimulated, whether or not I'm feeling heated, if I'm cool, if I have a drink in hand, that sort of thing. Still water, mind you, still water. I suppose I can, yeah, I, maybe I'll let y'all into days that I drink coffee and what I use it for. But baseline. Baseline, the baseline I've created for myself is no coffee right now, and I intend to keep it that way. Yeah, yeah, I go through having to wake up. Some days I snap awake if I have a lot of items on my plate. Some days I'll snap awake like I'm being hunted. <laughs> Those days. Other days, it's a fucking pain. 
um, chilling in bed, making lists, checking them twice, feeling like Papa Noel. <laughs> and um, I take my sweet time. When it comes to experts, what we expect of them is success almost all the time. Otherwise, why employ them? Why even contract with them? It's very rare that I've seen in the instances where I've employed experts or where experts have came to you know, lend us a hand where they've left unsuccessful. Because again, many can claim they are experts and get their bitch card pulled and they collapse. They fall like a fucking sack of rocks, like a sack, like a bag of rocks. Um, but in the occasions that I've employed experts or or an organization I was in the employment of brought in experts. Um, I feel like the professionalism was high and um, and so the trust, I think uh, the trust was also there. It had to have been there for the expert to be successful in their in their objective, in their agreement, and the duty they take on. But being an expert, it's very, it's very limited, very limiting, I might say, because you're only called on for a few items. And it's those items that you're contracted for with the pretense, the pretext, with the understanding that you are an expert in. That you'll see to it, failure is not an option, especially when the subject matter falls within your area of expertise. That's understandable. It's understandable, if you think about it, why an expert would fail, and that is if um, if an item in contention, something uh, that's at issue, something that they might have been contracted for, isn't in their area of expertise, and the debate is there whether or not certain funds should be uh, redeemed, should be returned, especially if we're dealing with payments up front and uh, whether or not renegotiation uh, should be called for. But I'm not, I'm not, um, well, I might touch on that in a little bit, depending on where this one goes. Keep in mind, I don't script any of this None of this is scripted. A lot of it is me uh, just airing out thoughts, airing out ideas that come across my table, that come across my um, my awareness, my the our, our timeline that goes back and forth between my partners. So these ideas that I want to take off of paper and put into words, uh, these are just ideas that I'm using to better develop my understanding of them, to think them through, to grow comfortable speaking about them, though a lot of it might be taboo. Funny, funny that uh, that we touch on taboo when we're speaking of compensating experts <laughs> because compensation is a uh, is a very taboo topic in corporate i mean at least in the corporations that i've seen 
that are run so close to the chest, so so held so close to the vest. They're fucking suffocating it, strangling it without any worry, apparently. They're just fucking restricting oxygen and lifeblood to their ranks. But fuck do I know, right? I'm no CEO. I'm just an intern. <laughs> That's some corporate cowboy shit. <laughs> So, returning to experts, yes, it's good. It's good that they exist. Experts, in some cases, are needed, are, are, are warranted. Reaching out to an expert, asking them about questions, asking them about issues, that need solving, especially ones that fall within their expertise. Yeah, that's that's all good. But again, keep in mind that experts are, um, for the most part, not for the most part, because I don't want to incriminate or bag on bag on anybody unnecessarily that might have a the title of expert in their resume. But experts can also get their bitch card pulled. I'll just put it that way. An expert who claims to be an expert can get their bitch card pulled. Unless, of course, they're able to mitigate it through professionalism. Because just because you become an expert doesn't mean that you no longer have to be professional. You no longer have to be diplomatic. Like you could just drop those and because you're an expert, everybody, everybody must take your word for it. Nah, experts breathe just like regular employees, just like entry level hourly waged (laughs) commission employees. (laughs) They breathe and bleed, baby, just like us, just like a corporate cowboy. And they can be corporate cowboys, mind you. But experts are tasked, are, what is it? Imbued with that additional responsibility of specialization in a field that they are experts in. And they must continue developing on their own, mind you, on their own, because few areas of expertise offer Uh, That continuing, what is it? Continuing education. That continuance in education to keep their experts abreast with what's going on in their field. Nah, a lot of experts to them, that's just the bare minimum. The bare minimum. And it's up to them. A lot of the more capable experts. It's up to them to educate themselves, to be on the... Not, not even the cutting edge, but the fucking bleeding edge. They got to be on the receiving end of what's new. They don't want to be behind it. They want to be either creating it or receiving it. They want to be there when it happens. And those experts, the ones that I just mentioned, are on the extreme. Very few, far in between. Don't count on every expert you come across to be like that. And fuck, that happens. And sometimes they gotta, um, sometimes they get hit for it. And fucking, it happens. <laughs> That's some corporate cowboy shit. Either you hit or you get hit. <clears throat> so when it comes to being a professional, being diplomatic, That's just the fucking given. When you're working with corporate, when you're working in corporate, when you're working with corporate, that's just, that has to be automatic. And if the person you'll do, and the person, if the other party you deal with doesn't have the diplomacy or has more diplomacy like that you find, yeah, I mean, feel free to take note. I mean, we're never stop learning. That's what a professional does. A professional is a professional until they have to learn more. 
A professional is a professional until they have to learn more. And in that way, they got to take the lessons in a diplomatic fashion. I mean, I hope they're all lessons in life and not and not lessons in death. But everybody's learning. Everybody is a, is a student of life. I think a student, I think that title is extremely cliche. Everybody's a student of life. Expressing it explicitly that you're a student of life, I don't know. I, I, maybe, maybe, no, I, it, personally, it causes me to question what have you given up at? Like, what, what, what is it about um, death, for example, that you've just accepted? Or what is it about, what is it not about death? You see, let me think through this. Let me think through this. Hold on. When somebody puts students of life in their Instagram bio, it causes me to question what... I see, I don't even want to say what hurt them because it sounds so fucking... It sounds so menial. It sounds so banal sounds vain what hurt you <laughs> when you say i'm a student of life up and downs kind of thing school of hard knocks that's another one fam we all are we all are even the rich even the ones born into mountains of wealth you don't think they have hard knocks up there <laughs> it's the kind that they don't receive uh poorly in terms of like financial like it's not it's not ones that they learn when they're starving <laughs> but there's hard knocks up there baby there's hard knocks and uh they have their own set don't think that they are the most well off <laughs> um yeah it, it it causes me to question um what did they uh when somebody puts a student of life or um, or graduate of the school of hard knocks, it makes me question not their professionalism. I don't know. It's like it's like saying they're a professional when they could easily get their card pulled. See, my mind wants to say cringe. But I don't want to fucking say cringe. <laughs> because it's not. I mean, I still... It's just another uh, It's another piece of information that I receive. No doubt I would do business with them. I'd still do business with them. I'd hook them on a contract. I'd get them to sign the line. But... Um, is it stability? I don't know. Some kind of mental stability issue there. That is is uh, raising flags for me and um if somebody knows yeah fuck it I, I probably don't have any listeners right now but if somebody comes across this knows it leave it in the comment section hit me up through a, a dm or send the organization an email and let me know what you think it is because i'm sure now that i now that i think about it I might not have the capacity, the mental, the mental capacity to dig into it right now, right now. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a, there's a concept for it. It might be in, what is it? Psychology? No, social psychology. That makes me, um, and it's not even iffy. It just, it just raises a couple hairs. When somebody has that in there, it's like, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm wasting too much time on this one. Sorry. But in trying to put it into words to not sound, um, offensive, I don't give a fuck if I offend people, but to try to put it into words, it's just to have people understand. Maybe it's the vibe, hopefully the vibe and the feeling that I give off and trying to wrestle with the fucking concept will register with people. 
and something sparks and somebody has the fucking concept to it uh, and can message me. <laughs> I don't know what it is now. I'm sure I've read it before. I just can't dig that deep at the moment. Um, but yeah, when somebody puts that down in their bio, just causes me, it causes me to question their, their image, their professional image a little, because you putting it on display, um, again, again, doesn't so much irk me as, as, uh, <laughs> doesn't instigate me. What's the fucking term? This is my criminal mind. My criminal fucking mind wants to go pull your fucking card. <laughs> That's it. But I'm a stand-up guy. If you feel me? That's why I said I'd still contract with them. I would still do business with them. And I have in the past. And they've told me up front. Um, you know, I didn't graduate from fucking Yale. But I can put Yale motherfuckers in the ground kind of thing. Like, <laughs> like because they have the experience. They have the know-how in their field. And they're able, they're able to sell me on the trust in that moment. Yeah, I dig it. I can dig it. But putting it out there like that, you know, maybe maybe they're painting their own target. Maybe they want to incite some kind of interaction. Maybe they're maybe they're asking the universe for a handful. I don't know. I don't know. But it's just um, it's it's something that. My eyeballs picked up and my fucking brain registered. So my mouth relaying it to you, I hope, does the same. If you have the concept for it, I would very much appreciate, uh, you know, I would very much appreciate learning what it is too and uh, being reminded with a little research. But experts we were on experts we were on professionalism we were on diplomacy and how those interact in corporate and sometimes they sometimes in some moments uh, you can't find them for the life of you in corporate it's difficult um myself I'd like to think that I'm a professional. Again, to many it's subjective, but there are there there are uh, norms, there are codes of professionalism that people follow in almost every profession. It's just honestly, it's it's just respect. It's just respect. It's the concept of doing unto others what you want to have done to you, um, paying others in kind kind of thing um reciprocity or reciprocating gestures of benevolence gestures of malevolence but you know that that doesn't always mean escalation or de-escalation that always depends on the on the context on the situation at hand and a professional is able to assess that in real time um for for is able to assess that for what is it opportunities for potential risk taking account of assets and liabilities um i don't know sometimes you can't even do that quarterly you have to do that monthly and again that all depends on the situation um in the future or here, and you can in the in the future you'll be able to find this on on multiple platforms, and uh, my hope is that I'm able to get around because I'm one of the only social media interns. I'm able to get the podcast, get the show, um, get the show, put the show out there, distribute it to not only YouTube but places like BitChute. Uh, we're on Patreon at the moment. We are taking donations through paypal.me slash corporate cowboys. Uh, there's a Venmo. There's a cash app. Um, if you click the link associated with this podcast, I believe it should take you to a link tree. 
All the links are in there. You can shop uh, for insignia pins. Those are handmade here in the U.S. I, um, uh, I've made those available. And those are from previous stock when things were under different management. But I've made them available, seeing as how they are still part of the corporate Cowboys line. And they're discounted right now. I believe I'll keep them discounted, so the site is just going to be uh, permanently discounted until stock is depleted for the foreseeable future, at least the next couple of years while I'm off, I'm away doing this thing. <clears throat> but if you need, uh, if you need some some kind of service, some kind of consultation, a professional consultation, again, I'm no expert. I'm no expert. The advice I give isn't legal. It might be, it might constitute ad hoc advice, but it's not legal until it's signed. It's not legal until you and I sit down in person, sit down via Zoom or Skype, and actually hash something out, something that's encrypted, something that's safer, something that's confidential which can be done, which can be done, okay? So you can message me for that if need be. Otherwise, conversations, just little, uh, somebody said roundtable chats are always fun. Keep in mind that I might be away uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, these podcasts will drop to maybe once or twice, depending on what the Patreon looks like. Always depending on what the Patreon looks like because... Uh, the number of subscribers, uh, the number of subscribers in the different tiers, will determine the amount of content that I'm able to produce, and I'm more than willing to um, focus my energy. I'm more than willing to divert, or at least propose and help divert resources from IA, from incorporating associates into the podcast in order for uh, there to be content that's appreciated. And uh, obviously you show appreciation through money nowadays. So you want to shoot us a dollar, you want to shoot us five, you want to send us $500, you can do so. Otherwise, you can also mail us something Um it can be it can be questionable. I cannot advocate for contraband or anything illicit. But send that shit to P.O. Box 3372 Rancho Cordova. That's R-A-N-C-H-O Cordova C-O-R-D-O-V-A California. That's behind enemy lines, and we'll have it forwarded. <laughs> we'll have it picked up and retrieved. California 95742. P.O. Box 3372. Rancho Cordova, California 95742. And to bring this podcast full circle, I want to remind you that what you hear is to what? What's it, how's the saying go? Believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. Fuck, though, I've seen and heard things that um, caused me to question all of reality. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? Fuck that saying. Fuck that saying. I'm always going to lead. I'm always going to go for smile now and i've and i've used this since i was young i've used this since i was young and i think it's rubbed off to a couple of others <laughs> is smile now laugh later and i know i know it's it was first what is it like laugh now cry later i always found that to be so fucking pussy <laughs> why why cry bro why cry if you think about it if comedy is involved whether or not life is a comedic tragedy or it's a tragic comedy. There's got to be some laughter in there. There's got to be some laughter. 
And um, and I, I really, I sincerely believe in smiling now and laughing later. So if, you, if you're able to smile now, if you're able to smile now, then you don't waste time crying. You don't waste time laughing because yeah, laughter, though the best medicine, isn't always the medicine that's warranted. You shouldn't. You obviously shouldn't laugh at inappropriate times. <laughs> I knew this manager. I knew this manager who told me, Alex, I don't, um, I don't like my job. Oh man, this is a great story, but I'm at a fucking hour right now. And um, that's really only how much I had for, for, for break. So I might shave it here and then uh, retell it later. But they told me one time, Alex, I think we were, uh, who was it? Yeah, we were wrapping things up, leaving, and it was uh, after hours. We were posted up outside of the building back when I smoked. Or was I smoking then? I forgot. But they were smokers. And so they were smoking, and I, I probably was just sitting with them while they enjoyed their cigarette. And they said, Alex, sometimes I don't like my job. I don't like, I don't like being uncomfortable. I find conflict to be so, so awkward, or I'm just awkward in times of conflict. And I said, we, we all are. I mean, conflict in itself is meant to cause a response. Like it's just our bodies responding to the conflict. It's making us aware that a conflict exists. I mean, if, if, our, if our brain didn't grasp the severity of the conflict, at least our body is giving us some kind of response that a conflict is there. It's normal. It's normal to feel uncomfortable in conflict. It's okay. It happens. I mean, to some people it doesn't happen. And that could be through desensitization, psychopathy, but for the most part, what I've seen is everybody, doesn't matter how deranged you are, when they're faced with conflict, will elicit a response. And no response might also be a response too. So yeah, keep in mind how you fucking calculate getting away with anything. <laughs> Maybe I'm just paranoid. That's some corporate cowboy shit. She was saying though, and it was a shame. They were telling me, Alex, I, I get so I get uncomfortable when I have to fire somebody. The other day, I called somebody in uh, for like a disciplinary action or something, like a warning, I guess. It was a little more serious than a verbal warning, something that was written up, a write-up, as they say, and something that they had to sign in order to acknowledge that you know, people skate on thin ice. People are on thin ice sometimes and they have to acknowledge, recognize that they're on thin ice. And apparently, they had been called in because it got it got serious to the point that it, it warranted letting them go. They had to fire them. Put, they set them up on a chopping block and they had to release them. They had to Cut them off. And that was the conflict that made them uncomfortable. And and I said, really? Like, um, my, my inquisitive mind always wants to know a little bit more. So I asked what kind of, uh, like, how, how awkward, like, how awkward are we talking? Maybe it's something that her and I could talk through. And again, I'm not I'm no expert, but I've seen some shit. So maybe professionally I could help them address this issue that they face on the job in order to keep a professional image, a professional front, and maybe I could help them in a diplomatic manner. And they they said <laughs> they said that when it comes time to fire them And then they get uncomfortable, like the the fiery, 
the fiery gets uncomfortable and or breaks down or begins to show emotion, she feels the urge to laugh. <laughs> and yeah, I get it. It's a it's a response. It's a what's it called? It's, a, it's not a disarming. Is it a disarming response? It's a jeez. Oh, what's the term called? I'm forgetting it now. It was on the tip of my tongue. But it's a it's a response that the body uses in order to disarm themselves of of any threat of any threat to the body and obviously this woman is the one in power and she's the one swinging the hammer bringing the hammer down smacking the gavel <laughs> and uh when there's an emotional response from the other side all she can do is laugh but this wasn't just at work she <laughs> They elaborated that in times of like death, at funerals, at wakes, when somebody dies and uh, there's people crying, she feels like laughing and uh, that it made her really uncomfortable. And I forget what I said at the time because I was younger. I was a little, I was a little fucking savage. I was savage as fuck. But... <laughs> But I I know I, I said, I must have said something like immature or in the order of like, just fucking laugh. If that's what your reaction is, if that's what your body's telling you to do, just fucking laugh. But make it sincere. Make it sincere, right? You obviously want to turn whatever reaction. And, and I felt like I had some truth in it. I felt, like, I felt like I had some rational basis in it. Because if that's what your body is telling you to do. You want to roll with it always. Don't go against intuition. Don't go against gut feelings. You want to incorporate them. You want to use them. You don't want to rely on them solely. You don't want to only rely on them. If your body tells you to laugh and you're at a fucking funeral, what are you going to do? Laugh? No, no. You want to roll with it. If you're going to laugh, you're going to do. You you're going to do it in a sincere manner. You're going to. You're going to want to make others laugh. I hope. I sincerely hope you want to make others laugh. You want to make others remember. If the decedent was a piece of shit, you want to laugh at a minor part of that and make light of the situation. I get it. Shit, that might be a curse. That might be a curse wanting to laugh in tight places like that. But it is what it is. If you're questioned on it, you obviously don't want to fall back and say, oh, it's just my involuntary response. I can't help it. And I was explaining to them that if you are going to laugh, you want to help the other person see why the situation is worth laughter, not why you're laughing. Why the situation warrants laughter. When somebody's getting fired and they have to cry or they feel like crying that's a bitch move too it's a it's their reaction and they feel like crying it's a fucking cop out that's what i mean by a bitch move but it's a cop out why because the situation doesn't warrant crying you want to cry the situation might not warrant it obviously that implies leveraging leveraging the emotion Leveraging the reaction onto the other person's conscious conscience, but I'd much rather laugh any day of the week than cry and smile always. Because getting fired is a new beginning. As long as you're not getting clipped, as long as you're not fucking dying, it's a new beginning. What was that thing you said, Mel? Every dog has a stay, huh? <laughs> he said, every day is above ground. Every day above ground is a good day or some shit like that. It's a quote out of Scarface. That used to be one of my favorite movies. And, um, yeah, that was before, before I took corporate seriously. Before I took corporate seriously, Scarface was the end all be all. I don't think I had another favorite movie.
until after corporate. I'll disclose that in a later podcast. In a later podcast, and tell y'all what my favorite movie is now. When I have more, more listeners. Cause it's not even it's not even like an acclaimed movie. It's just a really good one, my opinion. So yeah, keep in mind that a lot of what is said here is my opinion, the opinion of other people's, but just voiced through my voice, given reason through my own. Um, And at no point, at no point should it be construed to be legal advice. I'm not telling you to go out there and... uh, and um, pull your CEO's bitch card. <laughs> I'm not telling you to clip your CEO. I'm not telling you to go out there and create the power vacuums. No, no, that's those are later. Those are later episodes. I might promote, but I'll never incite. Right? I'll never ask. I'll never ask. If you want to know, again, shoot me a message. You can do so through, uh, again, I'm probably going to post it up through Patreon, Cameo, a couple other, but you'll see all those links in the link tree made available to you. If you need one-on-one consultation, we can arrange that. It can be arranged. Um, And if you want to come on as a client for some kind of... um, for some kind of consultation. I'm more than happy to. I'm more than happy to because it's what I studied. Um, I want to wish y'all a great week. This is only the beginning. To smile now and laugh later. So always keep smiling. Remain a professional. If you want to be an expert, caveat emptor, keep in mind what you're buying and then what you sell to others. Because um, when your car gets pulled, calls into question not just your expertise, but your professionalism. And uh, if you are necessarily the face of your profession, calls into question your profession as well. So... Remain diplomatic in how and how you present yourself as an expert or otherwise, as an employee, as a manager, as an executive, as a corporate cowboy.